Malawi, the beginning of the second millennium. The African continent is in the grip of the HIV AIDS pandemic. In the year 2000, 24 million people in sub-Saharan Africa were HIV positive. Only a thousand of them were receiving any treatment. In Chihatsulu Hospital in the south of Malawi, one of the countries hardest hit by the pandemic, the doctors were powerless and could only watch their patients die. Chihatsulu, 10 years later. In this district, 18,000 MSF patients are today receiving antiretrovirals, or ARVs. To understand how this change came about, let's look back at a decade of hard work. Treatment of opportunistic diseases, such as TB, and palliative care. That was the scope of MSF's operations at the end of the 90s. They set up their base in Chihatsulu Hospital in 1997. Prevention, training of healthcare workers, but nothing to fight the virus itself. Why introduce ARVs? Because our doctors are dealing with opportunistic diseases. Our patients come back time and time again and we end up burying all of them. As a medical organization, it's our duty to treat people. One reason for the absence of antiretrovirals was their cost, $800 per month per person for a treatment that has to be taken for the entire lifetime of the patient. In August 2001, thanks to generic drugs, ARVs finally became available in the MSF program. Despite the prevailing pessimism, the doctors wanted to prove that these drugs could be administered in deprived settings. If the program proved a success, it would be extended elsewhere. The NGO was able to place 500 people on the treatment program. The team was, however, faced with an ethical dilemma. So today we have to choose three. How to choose who would receive the drugs, how to choose who needed them most, but also who had the most chance of managing to comply with the treatment, thanks to the help of his or her family. We asked them to have a guardian, someone who comes with the patient and attends the drug administration session. For those who have not told anyone among their close family that they have AIDS, this then closes the door to antiretrovirals. This choice was clearly a debatable one, but as we have to make a choice anyway, that's where we made it. Yeah. He says, okay. A lot. Okay. In the morning, follow up was time consuming and complicated to set up and prevented the staff from treating more patients. At MSF headquarters in Paris, the various heads of the HIV program discussed how to simplify the treatment without sacrificing the quality of care given. On parle depuis hier de simplifier, de simplifier, de simplifier. C'est pas pour rien. Adhering to the watchword simplification, MSF, together with the Ministry of Health, gradually started decentralizing treatment from the hospital to health centers, which are closer to the patients. If you suggest to a doctor that uh, you, know, you could uh, treat people uh, with more limited laboratory tests and, uh, and maybe treat more people that way, but that you would lose a couple of these patients that you're treating um, along the way as the price for that. Um, I think the only way that a doctor would accept that is if he were absolutely convinced that there's no way that the laboratory resources could be provided. You do need a laboratory, but the question is, is how much? In 2005, after two years of trials, decentralization and simplification became the organization's official policy. 
With patient numbers constantly rising, one of the fundamentals of this process is the transfer of skills. But human resources are limited. The shortage of healthcare workers in Malawi means that the introduction to ARVs and follow-up of stable patients has had to be placed in the hands of specially trained nurses. You have disinfect already the finger? No. No, so you de- first you disinfect the finger, yeah. then you... In 2009, each of the health centres in the district was capable of providing a complete range of care, from screening to follow-up of patients on ARVs. Particular attention is given to children. We have seen that it's important to start talking about their status while they are young, like starting from six years and above. Most of the children, those who, are, who don't know their status until they are 14 years and 15 years, they have difficulties in taking the drug. The staff also concentrate on preventing transmission of the virus from mother to child during pregnancy. The program provides medical follow-up throughout the pregnancy and delivery. In 2010, around 1,700 women were admitted to the program and received specific antiretroviral treatment. Now we're in a new phase. As care is now accessible in most parts of the district, we're thinking more about the long term, and obviously this includes the possibility of handing over MSF activities in the district. In early 2011, MSF is supporting the HIV programs in the hospital and 11 health centers in Chihatsulu district as well as in Tiolo district. The NGO aims to apply the new recommendations issued by the World Health Organization. Patients must be given ARVs earlier and the first-line drug must be replaced by a new one, which is less toxic but more expensive. These recommendations imply more patients receiving treatment and therefore more money. They come at a time when the international funding agencies are freezing or reducing their subsidies, threatening the implementation of these changes and more generally, jeopardizing access to treatment for hundreds of thousands of sick people in Malawi.